In this video, I'm going to show you how to multiply with negative numbers. First, let's consider what happens when we have a negative number and we multiply it by a positive number. Whenever we have a negative number times a positive number, the result is going to be negative. So that's a big thing to remember here. So here's an example. First of all, if we take negative one, and if we multiply that by the positive number, say two, then the result is going to be the same as just regular one times two, except we're going to have a negative on it because negative one is negative. So the result will be negative of one times two, so negative two. Another example, suppose we had negative three and we multiplied that by positive four. Then the result would be just regular three times four, but with a negative in front of it. So negative of three times four, three times four is just 12. All right, so those are two examples of this general rule. And one thing to notice about these examples is that because multiplication is commutative, we could switch around the two numbers on the left hand side here. So for example, we could have instead of negative one times two, we could just as easily have two times negative one. And we would get the same result, we would get negative two. Likewise, we could have instead of negative three times four, we could have four times negative three and the result would be the same. We'd still get negative 12 because multiplication is commutative. So that leads us to another rule. Um, we can switch around the negative and the positive on the left hand side here and have positive times a negative. And we'll still get a negative. So basically, if you're multiplying two numbers and one of them is positive and the other one is negative, the result is always going to be negative. All right, so now we know that a negative times a positive is a negative and a positive times a negative is a negative. But what about a negative times a negative? Is that positive or negative? The answer is it's a positive. For example, if we take negative one and multiply it by another negative number, how about negative two, then the result is going to be just the same as one times two. The negatives will cancel out and we'll just have a positive number. So it would just be positive of one times two, so positive two. Likewise, if we had say negative four and we were going to multiply that by negative three, then the result would be a positive number. It would just be positive of just four times three and four times three is just 12. So negative four times negative three would be positive 12. All right, so let's box these important rules here. These are going to be the rules that we refer to anytime we do multiplications with negative numbers. And an easy way to remember these rules is to think that negatives cancel out when you multiply them. Just like subtracting a negative number cancels into addition, multiplying two negative numbers cancels the negative and then there's no negative on the result. So the result is positive. On the other hand, if you're multiplying a negative with a positive, there's just one negative here. So there's nothing to cancel that one negative and you get a result of negative. All right, so let's do some practice multiplying these negative numbers. We know the rules, so now let's just work a few examples. First of all, let's compute negative three times two. So just to, just to color code this for us, negative three, that's of course a no negative number, and then we're going to be multiplying by two, which is a positive number. And what's the rule for a negative times a positive? Well, there's only one negative, so there's nothing to cancel it out. So the result is also going to be negative. 
So let's put a negative sign. And now we can decide uh, what the numeric part of the result should be. Well, the numeric part is just 3 times 2, which is 6. So negative 6 is the result. OK, the next one is 4 times negative 5. So this time we have a positive number, 4, and then we're multiplying that positive number by a negative number, negative 5. OK, so again, since we just have a single negative number, there is nothing to cancel out that negative sign, so the negative sign stays on the answer. The answer is negative. All right, so now we just need to find the numeric part of the answer, and we get that by multiplying 4 and 5. 4 times 5 is just 20. So negative 20 is our result. Last one, we want to compute negative 1 times negative 8. So let's write that down. Negative 1, a negative number, times negative 8, another negative number. And then since there are two negative numbers, that means the negative signs are going to cancel out and the result is going to be positive. So now we just need to multiply what is 1 times 8. 1 times 8 is just 8. And we'll keep that positive because the negatives will cancel out with each other. Awesome. So the result is 8 and we're done. All right, those weren't too bad. So how about some trickier problems? Now we're multiplying three numbers in a row, and we've got a decimal right there. And then in the other example, we've got some fractions that pop up, and four numbers in the row. All right, but first things first, let's look at this example on the left. Compute negative 0.5 times negative 4 times negative 3. So let's write this down. This is negative 0.5, and then times another negative number. So that is negative 4, and then times another negative number, negative 3. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is let's just proceed from left to right multiplying pairs of negative numbers. So forget about that negative 3 for now. Um, don't, don't worry about it. Let's just look at these two numbers, 0 0.5 times negative 4. When we multiply those two numbers, what do we get? Um, well, this is a negative times a negative, so we know that the result is going to be positive. Okay, so result is positive, and now we actually need to find out what is 0 0.5 times 4. Let's work that out on the side here. Um, so to find 0 0.5 times 4, it might be easiest to think about what's 5 times 4. Well, 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, so 0 0.5 times 4, all we have to do is move the decimal place in 20 over 1 to the left, and we get 2. Okay, so zero point, negative 0 0.5 times negative 4 is positive 2. Okay, and now we're taking positive 2, and we're still multiplying that by our third negative number, negative 3. And now since we just have a single negative number in this product, the result is going to be negative, because nothing to cancel that negative. Okay, and then negative of 2 times 3, which is a lot easier to do, 2 times 3 is just 6. So negative 6, that is our result. All right, last one. This, uh, this big multiplication with lots of scary fractions. Um, that's all right. Let's just take it again, just one pair at a time. Uh, first, let's write it down nice and, and color-coded. So this is negative 1 third, and then that times negative 2 fifths, so another negative number, and then that times negative 3 halves, and then that still times negative 2. So again, we can just worry about the leftmost pair for now. Let's get that out of the way, and then we'll worry about the other two. So first thing to notice, this is negative times negative. So the two negatives cancel, and we'll just have a positive number. So really, we just have to multiply 1 third times 2 fifths. And multiplying fractions, we just multiply the numerator straight across and the denominator straight across. So this is really just 1 times 2 in the numerator, which is 2, and then in the denominator, 3 times 5, which is 15. Okay, so we're taking 2 fifteenths, and now we're going to multiply it by the next term, negative 3 halves. Um, and let's also take along our 
last term negative 2 even though we're not multiplying with it just yet. We'll, we'll deal with that in the next step. But for right now, let's do 2 fifteenths times negative 3 halves. All right, so this is a positive times a negative. There's only one negative. That means there's nothing to cancel out that negative. That means the result is going to be negative. So let's put down a negative sign. And then we just have to multiply the two fraction parts. So multiply the numerators. 2 times 3 is 6. And then over denominator, 15 times 2 is 30. So now we're just taking negative 6 thirtieths and we just have to multiply that by negative 2. And before we go ahead and do that, let's simplify a little bit first. So negative 6 over 30, that can be simplified. Um, how can we simplify it? Well, well, 30 is divisible by 6. 6 is divisible by 6. So let's go ahead and divide both the top and bottom by 6 and we'll just get negative of 1 over 30 divided by 6 is just 5. So this simplifies down to negative a fifth and we're still multiplying that by negative 2. And negative 2, um, in order to multiply that with the fraction easily, let's interpret negative 2 as a fraction. We'll interpret that as negative 2 over 1 because that's what 2 is. 2 is just the same as 2 over 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. And now it's time to multiply. So first of all, this is two negative signs, so they're going to cancel out and we'll get a positive result. So let's first compute the numerator. Numerator is just one times two, which is two, and then have a fraction bar, and then the denominator, five times one is five. So there we go, that's our result, two fifths. Great, so now we know how to multiply with negative numbers. And in the future, we'll also learn how to divide with negative numbers.